Greetings folks, welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas to you all, Happy New Year. It's currently New Year's Eve, so we're going to have a little fun in the garage. I am excited. On today's episode, we have a Sears Craftsman Chainsaw, 14 inch bar and a whopping 2.2 cubic inches of raw power. Let's go ahead and dive into it and see what treasures await. I think the first order of business is going to be a bit of bench top cleanup. This is left over from the Craftsman wood chipper when we did the tear down and uh, blade sharpening action. So let's do it. Well, there we have it. Would you look at that? Of course, we have the essentials left on the desk. Can't have an episode without hemostats. Get the boring part over with the overview. Okay, primer bulb. Will it squish? Not willingly. It will not squish willingly. Fuel, I'm assuming. I uh, do not see any markings. But I'm going to have to guess that that's fuel probably because... Because typically your gas tank's at the rear and your bar oil is up here at the front. So I bet if I clean this off I might actually be able to see what's going on. But we'll save that for later. Okay, throttle does move. Does our safety work? Yes, it does. How about our warm-up position or actually our starting position yes it does does it click back uh, with a little effort yes it does choke works interesting anyone else see that teamwork right there on is up easier to push down than it is to pull up okay i'm guessing that's our spark plug area there I can't really read that. Craftsman, tur, craftsman, tur, turable, turb. Oh, craftsman, tur, bear, 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 tur, oh, turbo. There's an O there. Craftsman, turbo air cleaner. Well, I am excited to check that out. I don't know about you. It's upside down current. No, it's not upside down. Craftsman is right side up. The identification marks are upside down. That's kind of funny. Whoop, got a bleeder. 14 inch, I'm assuming, 91, no idea what that means. Maybe someone can tell me down in the comments. And here we are. Hey, by the way, did you see what Santa got me for Christmas? You remember my other gloves? The problem I have now is that they're so nice that uh, I, <laughs> I don't want to use them. <laughs> it's warm enough out, it's about 36 today. Not too concerned about getting frosty fingers, but all right, first thing, I'd like to get rid of the bar. And plus, I want to check out this turbo air cleaner. Clutch, we chatted about it before. As the engine spins, these weights fly out, engage this surface, and drive the chain. Looks like a normal cover. This is our chain tensioner. This engages the bar in a certain location. And as you move that in and out with this screw, it tightens or loosens the chain. I'm sure many of you already know this. Also, the missus watched one of my videos and she said, is it true about your coworker thinking he got kidney cancer because he was exposed to use engine oil so much? And I said, well, I think so. And she goes, you need to start wearing gloves. And I said, okay, honey. So she, <laughs> she went out and she bought me some gloves. Probably don't need to watch me put on my gloves. Any bets on why this was parked? parked um i don't know let's see does it even spin over it does and it feels decent feels like we have good compression so it looks like oh well hey check that out get our low and our high mixture and if i had to guess that is our idle speed i'd like to do a quick gas tank inspection might give us an idea of how long it's been sitting here should we do the smell test? Uh, well, it didn't make my windpipe collapse and reduce my ability to talk, so it doesn't really smell that bad. I mean, oh, dang. That fuel line doesn't look the best. Sniff test, part two. No, it's not that bad. <coughs> Might get lucky. Probably not. 
Let's see if there's any oil in here. That's not happening. I put all these tools away knowing that I was gonna need to get them out again. Earl check. There we go. Oh, there's the pop. Love the pop. Do you see any oil in there? I mean, it's wet. We at least know it had some. That's a good thing. Basic checks complete. Let's get this off. <laughs> what am I thinking grabbing a screwdriver? There's got to be an impact socket for that. Too big. Way too big. Perfect. Extension, check. Adapter, check. Freshly charged battery, check. Off we go. Is it just three? Yes. Okay. What have we here? Are these captive? Yes, they are. Excellently done, craftsman. Excellently done. Oh, wow, there's actually, <laughs> there's actually info under the dirt. Taking bets. Will this disintegrate? It looks pretty clean in there. It is not disintegrating. Well, this is a great day, isn't it? Very cool. Oh, oh, good thing I didn't drop that in the intake. Okay, we're going to set that down before I hurt myself. Spark plug wire. What I think I'm going to do is... Oh, what is that? I don't know what that is. Oil splatter? Mm, that doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm going to set this back in here. Just so we don't uh, pour disaster down the carburetor's throat. Well, looks like it's going to be 19 mil. Yep, 19 it is. I am learning. This is exciting. Okay, what do we have here? Looks okay. Judging from the insulator in the middle, maybe that's a little lean. I quite literally have a book from school. I did automotive school, not so much small engine school, but it tells you how to read plugs. I think I'm going to go grab it. We'll do a quick... Uh, Quick inspection and reference our book. There it is. Automotive Engines, 5th edition, Theory and Servicing. James D. Halderman. Ooh, it even came with a CD. How exciting. I cheated a little bit here. And the color of the insulator in the center should be light tan or gray. And would you just look at that. Light tan it is. So this engine was actually running very well. Skip ahead if you don't give a rat's ass about spark plugs. While the spark plugs are black or dark, the engine should be checked for conditions that could be overly rich, which makes sense. Or burning oil, like our Craftsman wood chipper, that poor baby, burning a lot of oil. If all spark plugs are white, check for possible over-advanced ignition timing or a vacuum leak. I believe they're also, they also could be white if you're leaking coolant, which doesn't apply to us because this is a two-stroke application. Typical worn spark plug. This is typical. Hey, look. Tech tips. Two finger trick to help prevent over tightening a spark plug when a torque wrench is not available. Because <laughs> a lot of people use torque wrenches to, to uh, tighten down spark plugs. Simply use two fingers on the ratchet handle. Hmm. Even the strongest service technician cannot over tighten a spark plug by using two fingers. All right, good to know. I did really well in my engines class. I really enjoyed that class. And the reason I stick to small stuff is, well, I don't have to pay 1500 bucks to get a <laughs> to get a chainsaw on the side of the road. I think you know what's coming next. I will never forget the first time that I became interested in engines and mechanical machines. I was probably got the grill brush. I was probably seven, eight years old. I was probably eight. And my grandpa had left a uh, old Sears boat engine at our house for some reason, or, or we got it for whatever reason. And my dad pulled it out one day. It had been sitting for lots of years. Because I think we were going on vacation, and my grandpa wanted to see if it, it ran and if he could use it. So I'm sitting in the driveway on my butt, doing nothing, watching my dad. He's pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling, and finally the thing fired up. And it coughed to life, and it spit and sputtered and started running. And for some reason, that 
event in my life just lit the fuse. And from that point on, it was like, oh, wow, I love this stuff. This is so cool. And by, by some amount of luck, my wife keeps her eye out, too, for stuff on the side of the road. And she'll bring it home for me. Or she'll give me a call and say, is this worth it? Uh-oh. I got too into my story. See that little guy right there? I chipped the insulator. Is that gonna stop me from putting it back in the engine? Nope. I do not think we're going to have much of an issue. I could be wrong. Worst case scenario, it chips and the engine locks up. We'll see what happens. I'm thinking next, let's check for spark. I had a chat with someone in the comments section and he said that over the years he's found that uh, medical equipment, like these hemostats, and I've got a pair of surgical scissors come in very handy when it comes to automotive stuff, small engine stuff, whatever. So I say automotive all the time because that's my background. Ready? I'm gonna turn out the lights. Don't get scared. Oh yeah, it might help if I turn off the camera light. Thank you. Okay, ignition. We remember pulling the choke turns ignition on. It is on. No 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 no. Zoomage. And go. Oh yeah. We have all the spark. Nice and bright. Nice and white. We're... Oh, oh, just in time. Just a quick update. So I told you at one point I was gonna have a video on this. And I did. Well, it's gone. The entire thing. I had like I don't know, a couple days of work into this little guy, and then I had a couple hours into editing. And I use a cloud-based editor, and I didn't realize that I didn't back up my stuff. And if I didn't back up my stuff, it'd be gone. And I was like, oh, well, I don't need these videos anymore. So I deleted them all, not knowing that it still referenced those videos, and poof, it's gone. So one thing I didn't check was whether or not the stop button actually works. So let's do a quick check of that. All right, so that is on. We have Spark. Shut it off. Does it go away? Yes, it does. Okay, good. For your reference, CJ7Y, made by Champion. Should we take the muffler off and check out the piston? Why not? Uh, where are we? We're battery good. We're in, we'll go to racket mode. Three, two, one. Okay, looks like we have a heat shield here. Uh, why is that all? Is that where the exhaust exits on the back? It is. Okay, that's interesting. So the exhaust leaves the engine, goes through the muffler, gets spit out these two grooves, and then has to ricochet off of this shield and go out this direction. That's unique. If it works, it works, I guess. Maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> Either way, uh, that's, that's a new one for me. Let's have a look here. Ooh, do I see what you see? Do you see what I see? A uh, little bit of scarring in there. I guess I could just do this. Yeah, there's some scratches in there. How about the cylinder on the back side? I mean, yeah, it definitely has some scoring, scarring, whatever you want to call it, in there. That's sort of interesting to me. I wonder if this engine was stuck at some point and they had to break it loose. I don't know. I'm just curious about that. Next question. Do we have a multi-piece muffler? Yeah, we do. We do have a multi-piece muffler. This is exciting. Oh wow, this one's very simple. You guys remember the Mac? How many pieces that had? If, if you haven't seen it, boop, check it out there. This is quite simple. 
co front cover, housing, spark arrestor, massive spark arrestor. You don't really have to worry about this clogging up, do you? I'd be interested to know if anyone out there has actually seen one of these clog. Yep, there it goes. Fingers are getting chilly. Doesn't take long. Okay, well, pretty simple muffler. I have a feeling this one's going to be extra loud. And there she be. Except I put the screws in backward. <laughs> There. There she be. <laughs> Again. I'm going to take this inside and clean it. And by take it inside and clean it, I mean I'm going to rub it with a brush. Um, this is extremely, this looks like bar and chain oil. Can you see the spit strings that are coming off of this thing when I push on it with my glove? That's like bar and chain oil consistency. I'm not sure why the bar and chain oil would be getting up here. That or it's just I've been sitting a long time and have nasty two-stroke oil consistency, one or the other. Also, I, I just realized this is the turbo air cleaner. Uh okay, well but it's it's there. It's an air cleaner. I not entirely sure how turbo it is, but yeah, well, I'm going to go ahead and take the carb off because with our luck, uh, it's going to have a crispy diaphragm. And we all know you can't pick up something on the side of the road that's extra crispy and expect to turn it into grilled chicken. Are they 8 millimeter? They are indeed 8 millimeter. Turbo air cleaner. Staying in place. Tur turbo air... Get the hell out of there. There we go. Well, I mean, it looks clean inside, but that doesn't mean it's clean inside. Where did this just come off of? Ah, okay. That's a good one to know. There's our on-off switch. Let's check out the teamwork between the choke and the on-off switch. Fancy. That is not friendly to remove at all. There we go. Okay, a little prying action goes a long way. What do we have here on the side? Those are our mixture adjustments. Why? Oh, that'll come off with the carburetor. Okay, let's do a, do a little pop here. See if it wants to come off. Do a little extra persuasion. Oh man, that was stuck. Love that click though. Nice and clean. We're gonna set. I don't even know where that went. There we go. Okay, carburetor. You have been relieved of your duty for now. Oh, look. It's not a Zama. It's a Walbro. I think Walbro's USA, isn't it? If you're interested, there's 11... Nope. WT324816. Well, look at that. There's our do not adjust past point A or B mixture blockers. And they're off. Oh, well, those just... Those came off nicely. So my next question is where in the world did that fuel line come off of? Oh, it's at the primer bulb. That makes sense. So there's our, oh, it didn't break. Well, that's exciting. It just came off the primer bulb. Maybe we can just put it back on there. I don't know. I do not know. Good morning. It is the next, oh, the next day. Happy New Year to you all. When we left off, we removed the carburetor. So let's go ahead and rip into it. Get our nice sterile paper towel. Yes, lovely. Get our nice dirty carburetor. You like it zoomed? Yeah, it's a little better. 
Now I can see what's going on. Okay, so what do we want to do first? Well, why don't we clean the exterior? I'm going to do that really quick. Give me a sec. And by clean the exterior, I mean just take a brush over it. Let's pull out our mixture screws. One half, one, one half, one and a half on H. There we go. Already forgot how many that was. They call me the 10 second Tom of mixture screws. There we are. Uh-oh, the gloves are going to cause problems. There we go. Not bad. Probably a little bit of goo on there. Low side. One half. One. One and a third? Yeah, I'd call that a third. One and a third. There we go. Not bad. Is this idle? This is idle. The one that was labeled T. Alright, well, let's start with the uh, diaphragm side and see how crispy we are or are not. Ah, there we go, finally. All right, the tension is building. Got it. Oh, what is that green goo in there? Somebody put stable in here? I'll poke at that later. Okay, here comes the test. Oh, yeah. Can you hear it? Yet again. Another crispy critter to add to the collection. Well, let's take this off without stabbing myself. Someone's out there going, stab yourself! Sickos. Ooh. All right, not bad. Most of the gasket material came off. How's our little rocker assembly here? It's kind of sticky. Yeah. Well, we'll give it a good cleaning. Let's pop off the other side. Wait for the click. Yes. Oh, we have a pretty blue color this time. That's a first. Do they move? Yes. They still flap. That's good. A little bit of debris on the inlet screen there. That screen should just pop right out. There we go. Make sure you get that debris on that screen and just launch it into all the other passages in the carburetor. Needle time. Ooh, easy hemostats. Don't give up on me now. Get out our needle. Actually, there's our rocker assembly. Now I'll get our needle out of there. It is gooey, I can tell. That's okay. That's why we're taking it apart and not just trying to run it. Copper spring. How fancy is that? I believe that is a one-way check valve. We'll gently see if it moves. It does. Okay, well, I think I'll uh, bring out the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll fire it up. And here we have it, my digital ultrasonic cleaner. It is very much Chinese. Don't keep heating without water nor supervised. That's okay. That's great. doesn't matter. I've used it once just to play around with it. it seemed to work pretty well. The only thing that holds true from the comments is that it takes forever to heat up. So what I did today is, oh, there we go, in the house, I grabbed a whole bunch of hot water, as hot as I could, so that the tank is preheated. And then what I'm going to do is take one of my extra jars or containers around here, fill it up with hot water since I don't have anything like um, Dave's small engines had said simple green worked really well for him. I happen to be on my way to the store, so I'm probably going to get some. Anyway, now that I'm rambling about nothing, I'm going to fill up that jar, put all the parts in it, put the jar within this, this should stay hot, 
The jar should be the only thing that gets dirty. And Bob's your uncle. All right, switch on. Set point 50, actual, oh cool. Okay, so the water out of my water heater after traveling outside for a little bit is still pretty dang hot. So um, 45 should work just fine. Heater's on, we're at 48, pretty cool. Five minutes. We'll do 25 minutes. Mmm, organic garlic. No matter how many times I clean this thing out, it still smells like garlic. Needle. Bloop. Rocker assembly. Bloop. Rocker screw. Carburetor. Bloop. Bloop. I think really that's it. So I've bought this oversized ultrasonic cleaner for little bitty carburetor parts. I saw a couple people suggest this. It seemed to work pretty well, so we're just gonna roll with it, even though I can't put the lid on. Yeah. All right, ready for that noise that nobody likes? Something's happening inside. Maybe this will turn into a, uh, will it explode? I don't know, I'm gonna run to the store. I'll be back, we'll see if it first. All right, back from town. Let's get some light in this situation. First thing I noticed, temperature held pretty well. It's 31 degrees outside, and when I left this was at 36, so. The box itself is not warm. Water, however. Just the big question is going to be, well, look how cloudy that is. I guess the big question will be, did we get the goo out of that carburetor? Also, will it explode? No. No, it will not. At least not today. Oh, gosh, that still <laughs> smells like garlic so bad. Oh, jeez, that's gross. I love garlic, but not this, <laughs> this vintage of garlic. Ugh, I don't know what's been in here, but pickle jar, thank you for your help. Initial results. How are we looking? Toasty. Still a bit oily since we didn't really have a degreaser. How about this film here? Yeah. Still some corrosion on there too store did not have bulk so we're going to use the spray version I'm just gonna pour it right in there it's gonna be garlic scented simple green maybe we'll just add a just a dash of some paprika perhaps a little bit of parsley and then our carburetor will be good as new and whoever put this cap on holy cow and in you go there that's nice Bloop. Back in you go, little guy. Let's try round two. 25 more minutes later, check our hot garlic simple green solution here. New paper towel. Parts are over here. <laughs> Ever get so lucky you can feel it in your bones? picked up that paper towel. I did not pay attention to that. Okay, that could have ended very poorly. That's what I get for taking on too many things at once. Making my messes in too many spots. <clears throat> All right, that is a hot mess, literally. Let's see what we have here. Well, oh, that's interesting. So the green is still there. I don't know what that is. The simple green helped out. That looks, it almost looks like fabric. Can you see the way it strings? 
I wonder if something got into the fuel system and contaminated. Either way, look at the simple green. How nicely that worked. Everything's all clean and degreased. Thank you to Dave's Small Engines. That was a great suggestion. So I'm gathering the rest of the parts out of the garlic solution. And they turned out really nice. Actually, I think what I'm most impressed with is the needle. Because typically, well, before I put it in there, that needle was black. Now I'll get our needle out of there. It is gooey, I can tell. That's okay. That's why we're taking it apart and not just trying to run it. Just one thing to note is that the metal appears to have darkened. Um, I feel like I've seen that in a lot of other YouTubers' videos where the metal darkens regardless of the chemical that you use. Welcome back, folks. So I made a boo-boo. After soaking this, uh, I rinsed it in water. And I came out to it today and it had a bunch of corrosion on it. So lesson learned there. We're going to go ahead and use a little water displacement plus 40. And uh, just let that work its way around. No, probably should have put those gloves on, huh? That I keep preaching about. It's a habit I'm going to have to get used to. Because my whole life I've been doing stuff like this without the use of gloves. But we'll get there. Finish cleaning up our needle. Oh man, winter. Don't you love that? For those of you that are in the winter months right now, where your skin dries out like crazy. I absolutely despise washing my hands because then I get cracks in all my fingers and it's miserable. Although super glue works as a great liquid band-aid. There we go. All cleaned up. Did we get it? We got it. All right. Now, one thing I did not check is do we have a diaphragm? Cross your fingers. Yep, I believe that will work. So let's go ahead, check our button length. Well, what do you know? For once, I don't have to sand down the button. Some of you that haven't watched the show before, you're probably freaking out right now. You've sanded those buttons down? Yes, I have. We call that backwoods carb rebuilding. <clears throat> Okay, that should be that. Somebody, oh, yeah, there's a lot of goo, a lot of junk on there. Somebody in the comments, thank you for whoever you are, mentioned that the coating that's on the tip of these, that black coating, that's actually supposed to be there. So I wasn't trying to actually polish that off in the past. However, my methods may have caused that to happen. And now I am aware that I need to be a little more careful. One down. ATF dip. High side was on the left when I put it down on my tray. Low side was on the right when I put it down on the tray. I cannot find my flat screwdriver, so thank you, Steel. Last time I put mixture screws back into a carb, I... <laughs> I seeded them and then I never set them and then I put it on the machine which was our wood chipper made by craftsman and I couldn't get it to start so that was comical for for some of you but I don't take that stuff out because well I'm not an expert why make it look like I'm an expert all right so a little phone action here I believe we found our chainsaw if I look here we have 2.2 cubic inch 36 cc two cycle engine now this is for a 16 inch bar but we're at a 2.2 cubic inch engine which is what this saw has and if i'm not mistaken i read over here 
Yep, turn them both clockwise until they stop. Turn them both counterclockwise one full turn. So that is massively different than I believe what we had before. And yeah, check it out. That's what we have too. We have low, we have high, and we had the letter T instead of the letter I for idle. I don't know why they use the letter T, but either way, um, when we checked on these settings here, they were like two and a third out. I already forgot how many that was. They call me the 10 second Tom of mixture screws. So I will set them back to factory and we'll see what the heck happens. One half and one for the high side. One half and one for the low side. Also, regarding our crispy critters here, um, well, we're up to three now, huh? That one's a good one. I think this one was a rock star. Somebody had said use brake, uh, brake fluid, and I happen to have a jar of brake fluid, yeah. which I tried before. I didn't have much success, but you know what? Maybe we'll have more success with today's crispy critter. Bloop. Get in there, little fella. There you go. Always want to put your cap on your brake fluid because brake fluid absorbs water and it will eventually become water. And this one I'm just keeping in here because it keeps me company. I should probably use it as my, my icon. All right, enough being weird. Let's move on. All right, so we've made some pretty good progress. What do you think? Do we keep these for once? I don't think so either. Bye-bye. Thank you. I know one thing that needs to be replaced. That. Oh, wait. Seriously? We're leaving it. I gotta tell you, of all the things of repairing a small engine, replacing the fuel lines is my least favorite. And you know what? We're gonna leave it. That is exactly what we're going to do. Honestly, but though, I mean, look at this. This we got a dancer here. I'm not too I'm not too concerned about it. And I could probably clip the tip, just the tip, and get a new surface to grab onto the carburetor in both of these instances. Let's pop this cover off. Oh man, it's a real screw type. Okay. Should we do the captive test? Not captive. What in the world is this business here? Why? I don't know. It's hurting my brain. Back to the squeaker. The squeaker is held in by its own screws. So there is where, oh, it did, did it break off? It did break off. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, there it is, folks. We're doing fuel lines. Good for you, little buddy. Way to hang in there. Let's get this return line out of here. Uh, that is the longest return line ever. Holy cow, why is it so long? There's no way that's the pickup. Is that the pickup? Well, we'll find, <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. It was the feed. Why is the small line the feed? I'm sorry, but don't you want to suck lots and return the, the, the rest, what's left over? I don't know. Maybe somebody can explain to me why the supply line is small and the return line is large. Come on. There we go. Do you still function? And dare I do the poll test? Three, two, one. Yep. Can still pull through it. Looks like we have the cap hold down. Still stuck in there. Let's do a little medical procedure here. We'll call this the... Uh, no cappy loosey ectomy. 
What's with the... Um, I'm, I don't know what's going on right now. I'm learning all kinds of stuff, apparently. Oh, I see. That makes sense. You've got this little fitting... What do you want to call this? Little pokey washer. Pokey washer goes into the cap. And essentially, doesn't allow the line to come back out if it's seated properly. We'll just do piece by piece, one by one, till you shout, enough, I'm done. There, finally, holy moly. There she be. So I wonder if this is simply an anti-return line pullout barb, if that's all that is, if this is just a safety device. So you know what you do when you break one tip off your needle nose pliers? You break the other tip off <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> That's what I did. Since Craftsman, I, I don't know. Has anyone has anyone out there actually gone into a Lowe's? Is it Lowe's now? And actually tried to exchange tools? Because, you know, I broke the tip off of this and it's getting kind of floppy. And I'd like to replace it. But in the meantime, like I said, I just... Put the other tip in a, sorry, put the other tip in a vise and boom, broke the tip off so they're somewhat even now. I tell you this every time. I'm not going to make you watch me route the fuel lines because it's boring as heck. So I'm going to get to work. However, if you're interested, briefly, I always cut these at a sharp angle because. Trying to get a blunt object through that hole, not easy. Cut it at an angle, poke it in, rip it through, put my little barb on the end, pull it back through, call it a day. And we'll dip it in ATF for good measure. Well, I have run into a problem. I can get the line started and zoomage. I can get it just barely poked through there. You can barely see it. Probably can't see it at all. My problem is I do not have a tool grippy and long enough to reach in there and grab the end of the fuel line. So let's take a different approach. I have with me today some picture wire. Good old wire that you use to hang pictures. So what I'm going to do is attempt Emphasis on attempt to first. Oh no, I spilled my ATF bath. Let's do this the smart way. More ATF, my goodness. I'm going to go through here, I'm going to wrap around, I'm going to come out here. Okay. I have enough picture wire, I think I can spare some. Now, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do next, but we're going to try a couple things. So what I think I'm going to do first is sacrifice a little bit. Cut this on a sharp angle. There we go. So now we have a point. Gonna take our fuel line that we so desire to get through there. I'm gonna give it a stab if I can without stabbing myself. Finally, and I didn't stab myself. That's a bonus. Okay, well, at least we got the needle through ish, if you want to call it a needle. I'm gonna bend that over. And let's see if we can rip this dang thing through, if it'll handle the rippage. Think it'll make it? Let's find out on today's episode of Will It Feed? Taking my pliers, twisting my pliers around the wire to get a better grip. Oh, there it is. Look at it go. Got it through. Let's give it a little blast of lubricant because we don't like lubricant. 
Why do I pull out a southern accent for that? There we go. Oh, jeez. That stuff is stuck in there. There we go. Whew. Thank you for elasticity. All right. Got the end out. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Clip it. All right. We got a nice blunt cut end. Take this little guy, put it on here for absolutely no reason that I can see. There we go. And now we're going to pull it back up again. Now we have a fresh primer return line. What a day. Okay, next fuel line, the feed. Did we get it through far enough? Oh, are you serious? I can't see. <laughs> are you serious? I can't see up there to grab the dang line. I'm going to have to repeat what we just did. Let's see if I can do this again without stabbing myself twice in a row. Oh, success. Bend this baby over as long as we didn't work hard in it too much and it doesn't break. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. And we tore that one. Let's see if we made it through far enough. I can barely see it. See the shiny part in there? Right there. That's it. Okay. Let me see if I can fish it out of there. This is quite the expedition. Oh, got it. First grab? Seriously? Where is my luck coming from today? Okay. Fuel line. Complete. Will it rattle? Yes. What time is it? Oh man, it's almost 12. I gotta go to bed, because I gotta go to work. Ugh. And we're back for another day. So I'm pretty sure this will go on here no problem. Ouch, oh, cracked fingers. Blasting something into your cracked fingers feels so awesome. There we go. Jeez, I'll pizza, you guys. Okay, so throttle works, choke. No, nope. jeez, <laughs> what a mess, honestly. All these curvy lines. All right, so I've been trying to figure out the best place for these awesome fuel lines to go. This is not it, that gets poked there. That gets rubbed on there. I feel like fuel lines are like the brakes of Vice Grip Garage on his revivals. Anyway, let's keep going. All right. 18 minutes later, finally got the fuel lines on where I would like to have them. Holy moly. Fuel lines. Are complete. I'm gonna give this baby a quick spick and span. Just a quick one. I'm not feeling like going all out because for one thing this video is getting long. I do believe if I'm not mistaken we can put this cover back on. Should probably test that primer. Come on baby. Prime with me. Oh yeah here it comes. There it is. Let's watch together in all of the glory as the fuel runs through the carburetor. Oh no. <laughs> I knew it. Oh man, did I call that or what? I didn't call it because I edited it out. <laughs> but I said, oh, look at it. Just, <laughs> Just look at it. I said, you know what's going to happen? And I, I deleted this comment because I've been editing as I've been going. I said, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to fix this whole thing, and then this bulb's going to disintegrate. And <laughs> there it is. 
Ah, oh, ah. Oh. You know what? You can't help but laugh because you can't pick up something on the side of the road <laughs> that's a biscuit and expect to add gravy and it'll work. Ah, oh, we tried, little buddy. I'm sorry that you failed. Now I have to figure out how to replace you. You know when I bought these, they were supposed to be multi-sized? They are not multi-sized. They are one size fits none. I hope I didn't break anything. There we go. Now, what's going to fit in your place? Probably not a dang thing that I have. However, <laughs> this bulb came from another machine. And it's also used and somewhat not squishy. What do you say we replace the old crusty with the new crusty? And we see what the heck happens. Brum, chainsaw running vibration. Done for. Dang it. I might just have to order a part and delay this darn video even more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not giving up yet. These are glued for sure. Beat on it enough and it'll just break. Yeah, they're supposed to be glued. Ah, oh, bummer. Well, the good news is it looks like this bulb happens to be the same size as the bulb we need. And well, it's a fresh one. So there you go. Wasn't a complete waste, but now I gotta figure out how to attach it. All right, we are back for another day. All right, so when we left off, I tore apart our primer, and <laughs> I went inside, and I JB welded the primer back together. Why don't you just order a new one? Well, why not see if this works? JB welds pretty crazy stuff, so. And if I plug the bottom holes, it seals. So I'm thinking it's going to work. And we have the new rubber piece on there for our purge valve. All right, let's screw that back on. Ready? Here we go. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. I am excited. Let's go ahead and fix this too. Might as well anyway. Tug test. That's on there pretty dang tight. I'm pulling hard. I don't know how it came off last time, but... There we go. We got our cap saver. Jeez. That was a good pop there. I want to leave this cover off so that I can watch the carburetor, make sure it doesn't start spitting fuel everywhere. It's time. Okay. Cross your fingers. If you can. We are primed and purged of air. We are choked. We are in the start position. Let's do it. Oh. <sighs> so I go to walk up the stairs the other day, turn around, slip. They're solid oak stairs, and when I fell, my two legs went out from under me, and my back landed on the edge of a step. 
I don't know if I have cracked ribs or not, but we're gonna keep on keeping on, even though it doesn't feel great. Oh. I think I forgot something. But, <laughs> but hey, it runs. <laughs> I kept looking at the front of this thing, and I'm like, why is there such a big valley right there? Oh, well, we'll go start it anyway. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, try again. It's a little quieter. <laughs> on the left. So it definitely will go out a quarter turn. That high side seems to be adjusted nice right from the factory at the one turn out that we went with. Uh, it just sounded like it leaned out a little bit at the end there instead of the put, 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 put and it was kind of a brrrr and then it died. So yeah, I'm sure you all understand exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> see if we get some oil plus it's cold probably doesn't want to pump too well but go ahead and try it anyway oh on off switch Plenty of oil flow. Come on hands, work with me here. All right, we'll just button things up. That was lucky. That's it. I believe we are done. Well, that's cool. Customer assistance gives you your chain and bar number. On a closing note, this is a 1998. Oh, that's the uh, US EPA emission date. So it conforms probably with 1998 US emissions, but it's possible that this is also from 1998. There's your family, your displacement, serial number, and model number if you're interested. All right, folks. I think that's it. I don't have a 14-inch chain. I'm not going to put the money into buying a 14-inch chain just because I don't plan on using this saw. Had some fun with this one, especially JB welding your primer bulb there. <laughs> but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. Also got to try out the ultrasonic cleaner for the first time on a carburetor and found out that Simple Green works really well. Got another machine all rehabilitated and ready to go. So. That is that. I want to thank you all for tuning in, and if you find yourself super bored and super desperate to watch something, well, join me next time.